There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that Radio Master continue pushing new designs and new tech for their RC radios, and the rate at which they innovate is mighty impressive. The range of radio suits all budgets and RC needs, so when they launch a new radio, it's time to sit down, get a cup of tea, and soak up whatever new exciting stuff they have to offer. This is their newly launched GX12 radio. It's an Edge TX radio with internal 1 watt Express LRS. And not only does it look different to everything else, it's got a hidden trick up its sleeve. Well, two, actually. It's not just ELRS, it's dual band, cross band ELRS running Gemini mode. It's using 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz at the same time for the ultimate reliability in open source tech and what I believe is the future direction of RC radios. If you find this video helpful, why not give it a like, subscribe, and just leave a comment. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Radio Master only sent this to me a couple of days ago, so this will be a first look review at the GX12 rather than a full test. It's just so you know it's out there and what it's all about. Now I reviewed their Nomad crossband ELRS module a few months ago, and I've been using it on my Dolphin Wing with great success. And this is essentially the same TX module built into this new look radio. I've done a few videos covering Express LRS Gemini mode and why I think it's more than just a neat feature. Radio Master's version is called crossband using dual frequencies. Gemini mode is a mighty important innovation and as I've said many times before, this will become the norm in radios very soon. And this GX12 just confirms my predictions. So let's have a closer look. As you can see, the form factor of this is quite different from the current range of Radio Master radios. To give you an idea of size and scale, we've got the original TX16 here, and you can see it's quite a bit smaller than the TX16. And comparing that to the Boxer, it's sort of similar. The main difference is that you've got the display at the top here, not at the bottom. And this is still a little bit smaller. In terms of weight, these are about the same. And if I bring in a Zorro, it's actually quite similar to a Zorro in terms of size. And again, displays at the top. I think these gimbals are exactly the same. These are CNC machined uh, Hall Effect gimbals, same as we've got on the Zorro. And if we compare that to a pocket, you can see the difference in size. I use this quite a lot, actually. And in some ways, you could argue that this GX12 is a bit of a mashup between a Zorro, a Boxer, and a Pocket all mashed into one. Move that out of the way there. We've got the two antennas at the top because it's dual band, cross band. And if we look at the radio, it's all very familiar. We've got all the usual switches and buttons. So we've got three position switch there, three positions, three position, three position switch there. You've also got two momentary switches on the top here, that one there, that one there. There's also a couple of rotary controls on the top with a nice, very positive center detent. And then you've got headphone output here and you've got your trainer port there is very good. I'll come onto that USB socket in a second. And then on the front here, we've got two momentary switches, very conveniently where your thumbs are. The sticks are very nice. So they're the same, about the same size as the ones in the Zorro. So you can pinch this. Now I'm not particularly a fan of these game style controllers, but actually the Zorro is not bad, Main, mainly because I can't pinch with these so easily. But this is very similar to using the Boxer, if I'm honest. Then you've got all your trim switches, and then you've got the usual 
HDX controls and these are six programmable switches and you can not only change what you do with those but you can change the colour of the LEDs. Speaker in the front and a couple of rotary switches and then the usual selection here. So let's turn that on. Welcome to HTX Angle Mode. Monochrome display. Now some people may not like the monochrome display. I actually prefer it. I don't see the point in having a big colour display. I think this is perfectly visible uh, when you're out and about and it's less distracting. As you can see you've got these different buttons here. I don't know how these have been set up yet but you can program those to do whatever you like. Now the interesting change that they've made is that this USB port up here is multifunction. Now traditionally on something like a Zorro or a Boxer you've got a couple of USB ports. You've got one at the top which is the one, if I can show it, that's the one where you plug in to do all your firmware updates and that sort of thing and then you'll have one on the bottom which is for charging because like all these radios, this new GX12 has got a built-in charger. Difference with this though is you've just got one USB-C socket, which is nice. No confusion about which is which, no potential to plug the wrong one in the wrong hole. As you can see, there's nothing on the bottom. Uh, batteries in the back, it doesn't come supplied with batteries. You had to get those yourself, but you use uh, 18650 cells, all very neat. And on the back, there is a nano socket. So you don't get a JR socket connector on here, you get a nano, but that's not really a problem. If you want to plug any other modules in here, most external modules will come with an adapter. Let me just get out of that. I pressed a button by mistake. There we go. So another neat feature that I really like is in the box, you get a couple of these blanking plates. Initially, I thought, what the hell are these? But actually, what it means is that you can change how these switches are organized on the top here to suit whatever you want. They also apply, supply a couple of additional switches. So this is that's a two position switch and this is a two position momentary switch. So if you want to swap these out for something that's a bit different that doesn't have these controls in, you can just undo these uh, Allen screws here, 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 and here, and you can screw this in its place and put other switches in or blank those off or whatever you want. They've also made provision for like an SMA type connector on the back there. So you've got these blanking holes. So if you want to use different antennas on the back, you can take this apart, put those in, whatever you want, but it does come with two antennas anyway. Let's see what I'm doing. There we go. Now, in terms of Edge TX, this is all fairly normal. So let's just have a look and see what, uh, hang on, return. Let's just press that and go back. And this has been flashed with version 2.11 of Edge TX. Interesting. Uh, but it does say it's a fairly recent one, so it's back in October, so that should be fairly good. And what else can we say about this? A fan in the top here. This top bit seems to be made of aluminium or CNC or cast, or I'm not quite sure. It's not plastic. The whole case feels very solid, very nice. No creaking. You can see, it's all very nice. And these grips on the back make it easy to hold. I've always liked the way that Radio Master use this fabric strap rather than this, these stupid straps on the, sorry, handles on the back. I think it's a much neater way of doing things. So if we look at the spec on this, it's basically a dual band, dual one watt Gemini crossband express LRS transceivers in here. So it's two watts in total. And that means you've just got that fantastic reliability and range that crossband Gemini mode gives you. You've got these two antennas, all very nice, they fold away. And this is compatible with basically 2.4 gig and 
they call it sub G, which is nine, the 900 megahertz range. And that runs simultaneously. I've done another video about Gemini mode and why I think it's a big advantage. Check that out. And you'll see why I think it's probably not necessarily the biggest, but one of the biggest uh, innovations that Express LRS has come up with. I think it is particularly important. A couple of CNC's, CNC, CNC aluminium um, gimbals, if I could say it, Hall Effect, and they all feel very nice indeed. And I think, yeah, actually the stick ends, they're actually, good. Oh, no, they're pretty good actually. I think they're pretty good. Like I say, you've got the removable panels on here, so you can swap it around to be whatever you want. And it gives you the choice whether you want to use the built-in antennas or whether you actually want to use your own SMA connectors on the back. It's an OLED display, very crisp and clear. I have to say I quite like it working in this reverse mode because I think it's a little bit easier to see. There's 512 meg of integrated high speeds flash storage in here. So there's no need for TF cards or anything like that. And you've got the usual USB connectivity at the back. I think it's a great idea actually, having this one switch here. So I think that's all very good. And like I say, all these switches here can be programmed, not only to do whatever you want, but you can control the color of the LEDs. Price on this direct from the Radio Master website is $169.99. And apparently the PCBs in here have got something called a nano coating. That basically means that this will work in more extreme environments, whether it's hot, cold, damp, humid, and so on. I'm not gonna try that out, but that's what the spec says. So I think it's pretty good. The idea is I think that Radio Master trying to give you something that sort of delivers in all environments. And generally I think it looks pretty good. I do rather like that. So I've been using this on a couple of flights, nothing particularly adventurous, but I just wanted to check that everything worked. And I'll be looking at this in more detail on a test at a later date. Yet another Radio Master Landmark radio. Of course, only time will tell, but I have a very good feeling about this. I've used it a couple of times when Storm Dara has allowed me and it's worked perfectly. If you don't have a crossband receiver, it doesn't really matter. Even if you leave this in Gemini setting, it works just fine with a regular ELRS receiver. Um, weather permitting, I'll get out and give this a good range test, but until then, it'll just have to wait. I have to say though, it's a very convenient size to put in a small flight bag, and it's packed with the latest ELRS tech. And it's a nice change to have a radio with a different form factor. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. Let's do that again. So this is scene four, do a white balance just in case. Steady, three, two, one. Three, two, one. So, is this yet another Radio Master landmark radio? Of course, only time will tell, but I have a very good feeling about this. I've used it a couple of times when Storm Dara has allowed me to get out and it's worked perfectly. And even if you don't have a crossband receiver, it doesn't really matter. You can leave this in the Gemini setting and it works just fine with a regular ERS receiver. And weather permitting, I'll get out and give this a good range test. But until then, I'll have to wait. I have to say though, this is a very convenient size to put in a small flight bag and it's packed with the latest ELRS tech. And it really is a nice change to have a radio with a different form factor. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please subscribe. And if you're on Facebook or Instagram, you can follow me there as well. Thanks loads for watching, and I'll see you next time.